Ahoy. The other day, I talked about what's coming to New World for PC players. And in that video, I told you right away that that's just gonna be half of the story here because I also wanna talk about how absolutely botched the announcement was and everything around it. Because obviously, the vast majority of the New World player base is extremely frustrated with how things were handled. There are various aspects that can be discussed here, but today I want to focus particularly on the marketing. There is a good chance we'll talk about the other aspects in the future. And when it comes to the marketing, we have to wind back a little bit to what actually happened since last year. I don't know how many of you remember this, but when the last expansion came out, Elysian Wilds, they announced that this is just the first step and there will be a lot of content coming in winter and it made it seem like they had a plan, a seasonal plan for the whole year. I justified the price of the expansion saying that this is basically paying for another year of content. I thought that was how it's going to be and that made a lot of sense to me. Based on their roadmap, it seemed entirely safe to assume. It just absolutely didn't happen, which is why it's no surprise to me that this year's quote-unquote expansion on new features that we're getting on PC won't be paid for, but rather it's the console players that are paying for the same experience that we already have for the most part. This started with almost all Season 4 content either being cancelled or pushed back some parts into later seasons, some parts haven't even come out yet, like for example uh, Crossworld Arenas that's gonna come in the future that's now been announced again. So basically they did a repeat of the previous year before that where there was no content for way too long. Maybe with a minor difference that this time there were at least some balance changes in between, as opposed to last year where the musket was just broken for half a year or so. But leading up to the console announcement, even those balance fixes and bug fixes slowed down significantly. We had some really quick fixes right after Slayer Script got released, everyone was excited. And then after that, the pace of fixes decreased dramatically to a slower rate than we had before that. Scott also pretty much told us to take a break from the game or don't expect much for the next month because there's going to be the big May announcement originally uh, where everyone will get something exciting and uh, in various announcements or in various mentions of that it was also said that this is not just for console players or rather but they said it's going to be something great for new players but also existing players so the implication was that it's both. You don't need to study marketing to know that building hype like that is a bad idea but I happen to have studied some marketing and I can tell you that it's a bad idea. Hyping up something long before its release will massively inflate the expectations. There are situations where it can still go well, but that requires you to either completely over deliver on expectations, which most companies simply can't, or to have a very positive perception of your company in general, just have a lot of goodwill, uh, have a lot of hype surrounding your company as a whole. So think something like Final Mouse, for example, who really don't release all too much revolutionary stuff these days, but always overhype it and always get these like huge early surges of sales uh, just because there's a certain group of people that wants to be like on the inside. Same thing with like hype beast stuff or anything. That does not work for a video game targeted at a usually older MMO audience. Scott in particular has a tendency to hype up a lot of things that then end up falling flat uh, to his excitement about them. And I'm sure he was very excited about the console announcement for the company itself that is huge and that is a huge undertaking to do. Uh, but the lack of reflection that this would not excite PC players to the same degree uh, is something that just is a massive marketing failure in itself. It is very much possible that that was just an attempt to deflect from all the questions about the lack of content and also to try and keep people playing. Scott kind of implied that at some point even. But ultimately that is dishonest and it will hurt your goodwill with your community, with your audience even more and that is exactly what we saw happening. By the way, quick reminder at this point, if you're enjoying the video so far, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Now, I made a poll the other day asking how you feel about the upcoming content that has now been announced or that I've put together uh, for PC players. And as you can see here, uh, the vast majority of people are saying I expected nothing and I was still disappointed. Uh, and we have a portion of people that are actually saying they're quitting due to the lack of upcoming content. Though I would say that portion is so far at least surprisingly small that may change over coming month though. It is also possible though that a lot of the people who selected I expected nothing were still disappointed are currently not playing anyways and are just waiting for any potential news to come back. 
I personally was in the I didn't expect more category. That is simply because I think that's the category of players that have been playing the game for the longest. You don't end up expecting much anymore. If you have been following the developments and announcements of New World from the beginning, then you likely don't really expect much at this point. And as I established in my video the other day, content-wise we're pretty much getting what was leaked and data mined, plus a few things that seemed relatively obvious like 725 gear score. But the question I asked was just about the content. When it comes to the announcement and entire marketing approach of this weekend, I would most certainly fall into the I expected nothing and was still disappointed category because that was just entirely abysmal. The trailer itself was weird to see because it was basically just announcing the console launch and a lot of the cinematic stuff didn't really have any relevancy in that regard. And even there, they would have easily been able to sneak in some more upcoming content. They showed a little bit of swimming in there. This could have just been built up way better in a way that also gives some glimpses for existing players. But let's just keep the trailer aside. It would have been very easy for them to make this trailer and have this be the big deal for the console players and then go ahead and have a separate segment for the existing players on their YouTube channel. Because every existing player who watched the trailer would have been like, wait, this is it? Where is the upcoming content? And that is exactly what happened. So they would have gone to the New World YouTube content to see if anything else is announced specifically for us, whereas the trailer would have been for new players that hear about the game for the first time at Summer Game Fest or that are just playing on console. And they did give us the announced dev update. But the announced dev update was just aimed at everyone and no one in the worst way possible. It was a 34 minute dev talk that went into detail about things that just didn't need to be discussed at this point. We know that AGS team likes to discuss the intricate mechanics of how they do certain things in the game and what they have improved, but this is not the moment to discuss why or how you have improved the jumping mechanic. Even a lot of the stuff aimed at newer players doesn't really make sense. A newer player will play the game and experience the world and see how it is. They don't want that explained beforehand in a 34 minute video. And if you tell them that you have new cinematics in between the fights, that's not gonna mean anything to them if they've never played New World before that. Like what's that compared to what cinematics they did or didn't have before? Who knows, because I've never touched this game. It is again the classic situation of the New World devs wanting to talk about something because they're proud of having done it without considering which part is actually relevant for which audience. Instead, this should have first of all been a video that focuses purely on upcoming features for PC players, for the existing audience. That should have been the first video that comes out uh, along with the trailer, so that you meet both of these demographics, essentially. And then, if you want to, you can make a separate video introducing new players to the game, or whatever else you want to discuss, whatever tech updates you want to discuss uh, that may be relevant for console. What's even worse is that the messaging around the announcements was so confusing that some people thought that they would no longer be able to play New World if they don't have the expansion, that New World is no longer an MMO, and so on and so on. Take this article, for example, from PC Games N. They literally just assumed that New World would be removed and replaced with an upcoming ARPG reboot. And I can't blame them for getting to this conclusion because the messaging was so mixed and so bafflingly out of touch that I'm not surprised that some people would end up at these conclusions. They had to then backpedal and within a few hours release some explanations for what they actually meant to tell us. But of course, at that point, it's already too late. You've had your big trailer, you've had your big announcement, and that's what most people are looking at first. And again, there were very clear marketing decisions at play here, such as the rebrand to an action RPG, or also the conscious choice to simply not focus on addressing the PC players at all. They were willing to take the hit with the MMO fanbase, and maybe that's also a goal of tempering expectation when it comes to any consistent updates to the game. I think if they say we are an ARPG, then they can kind of get away with not doing as many consistent updates. And likewise, they were willing to take a hit with their current existing audience in general, because they basically just left them in the dirt with these announcements. Now, we could wonder if this is a result of incompetence or them being willing to sacrifice their current base. 
But either way, an outcome like what's happening to the Steam reviews at the moment was entirely predictable from a marketing perspective. They then had another opportunity to communicate since they did an IGN Live where some members of the dev team uh, were talking about the game again, where they once again basically just catered to new players. Only after all this backlash, they even announced that they will have a Forge Entertainment video this week explaining what current players can expect, which, again, my expectations are that we're not getting any more than what was already found. But remember that they had months to prepare for this announcement and even stop doing other stuff uh, just so they could focus on it. So they had all this time to make sure that the announcement is well received in every way possible. Uh, even if it may not meet everyone's expectations, they could have been ready to at least address the existing and their potential future player base separately uh, and clear out things for everyone from the start. And they simply missed the mark on that entirely. And I'm sure we're going to get our apologies from them in the upcoming Q&A or maybe in the uh, Fortune Eternum, whichever. Uh, but an apology is just another one to the list at this point. It's not going to change that this will significantly hurt the existing player base and just further erode trust if that's even still possible. It's especially astonishing that this happened off the back of the censored interview, which really should have given them a clear message as to what the current player base wants and how they feel. It is technically, from a sales perspective, not necessarily a bad idea to focus on a new market when you feel like your current existing market is just not worth it. But that also doesn't mean that you'll benefit from actively ignoring your existing customer base. Again, all it would have taken is a separate video, along with the announcement, telling people what they can expect as PC players next year. Even if many wouldn't have considered it enough, it would have not led to the same amount of negative reviews. And it also would have not led to the same level of disappointment that these players have, that they will now actively tell other people not to play New World. Because that's something that can hurt the potential of New World on console before it even releases. I could almost go into conspiracy territory and assume that maybe they want to get rid of their current players because it costs more to keep them, especially if they've been playing for a long time. But in that case, I think they would have charged for New World Eternum because then they would have tried to squeeze as much out of their existing player base as possible. There's more to talk about when it comes to this announcement and we'll do that in the next days. But what I'd like to hear from you is what you would have liked to see announced for this year. What kind of content would you have liked to see? Anything from smaller quality of life things to bigger major content features. If you want to see those follow-ups, then consider subscribing and clicking the bell. And if you'd like to support me further, then you can do so on my Patreon. Thanks to all of my patrons who already do exactly that. And thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.